Psygnosis logo on a long box, a combination that is sure to warm the hearts of many longtime PlayStation fans. Coming on the heels of Namco's arcade port Ridge Racer, Destruction Derby looked to smash into the 32-bit racing landscape and provide its own unique spin on the genre. One where just surviving the race could be your key to victory. Today, we take a look back at Destruction Derby. Destruction Derby was developed by Reflections and published by Psygnosis in November of 1995, a few months after the US PlayStation launch. Destruction Derby is an arcade-style racing game made for those who believe that other cars and the racetrack walls are a perfect substitute for brakes, blending elements of both stock car racing and demolition derbies to create a more raw and buttoned-down driving experience. A clear deviation from your traditional racing game, where speed is the name of the game and collisions are to be avoided. You won't find any supercars here, with magazine advertisements fully highlighting this approach. Small, narrow tracks keep the action centralized, and with up to 20 cars packed into each race, there's virtually no place where you won't be driving in the thick of things, ranging from standard ovals to chaotic figure 8 tracks which have you driving through the cross traffic of other drivers, which only adds to the vehicular mayhem on screen. In the July 1995 issue of Next Generation, developer Martin Edmondson stated, we wanted to keep the density of cars very high. We're aiming for 10 car pileups, and the shortest circuits lend themselves perfectly to this kind of action. Developed during the burgeoning era of 3D gaming, Destruction Derby showcases real-time crash physics and damage modeling, blending elements of realism with enough arcade hit-and-run action that pushes you to keep the pedal to the floor. Vehicles exhibit the damage they take on the track, and their steering and performance is also affected by it. A fairly new and uncommon feature for its time. This leads to strategic decisions on when it's best to fight for a top finish or to keep recklessly smashing your way through the field, depending on which of the four possible game modes you are playing. With the game even offering up a destruction derby mode, which abandons racing entirely for the thrill of surviving a battle of vehicular combat. With the simple goal of dishing out as much damage as possible, attempting to knock out other drivers in an open bowl free for all. Although not the best looking game graphically speaking, it manages to harness all of the destruction and objects on screen at a playable frame rate, and features an upbeat, techno-esque soundtrack that never feels out of place with the action on screen. So that all sounds like a great time, but let's jump into Destruction Derby and see what it's like to play. From the main menu you are presented with four different game modes. I would consider Reckon Racing the most interesting as well as being the game's main offering. Here you race against 19 other vehicles and are awarded points based not only on a top 3 finish, but for spinning out other drivers, with the main focus being wrecking other cars to accumulate points. Whoever finishes with the highest point total wins the race, regardless of your final finishing position. A nice blend of racing, but with the vehicular combat that is the main draw of the game. Even though the game doesn't present a glaring sense of speed, the weight and feel of collisions are done well. It feels wholly satisfying when you accomplish a perfect pit maneuver or smash into a helpless opponent on the track. But it does this by keeping all the action grounded, literally, with no flips or other aerial acrobatics on display, which is a bummer. You are awarded points for spinning out other vehicles and for knocking them out of the race. These are all doubled if inflicted on the first place car, so it's a good strategy to keep pace with the lead pack and inflict as much damage as possible on the front runner. But with your car also sustaining damage, there's a balancing act where you must decide when it's best to keep going after other cars and when you should just try to finish the race. You compete in Reckon Racing on a circuit of five tracks which culminate in the Bowl, an open demolition derby style arena that forgoes any pretense of racing and focuses solely on demolishing other vehicles. This is a nice change of pace to cap off each season and helps add more of the demolition derby aspect to the mode, but more on this track later. Finishing a season in first place moves you up to the next division, ultimately continuing this gameplay cycle until you wind up in Division 1. Finish in first place here and you are presented with a trophy and are treated to the game's end credits. You also unlock a new track, the Ruined Monastery. This track features a tunnel, which is what passes for visual flair in the game. The tracks, or lack thereof, are honestly one of the main problems in Destruction Derby, with only 5 in total plus the unlockable. They sorely lack any sort of distinguishing characteristics and are largely forgettable. 
Among these are your standard oval, a few of the road track variety which feature tighter turns, and a couple which have you constantly weaving through cross traffic, which are easily my favorite in the game. Whenever the game leans into the car combat aspects is when it shines, and I wish it went deeper down this path. The one downside here is how disorienting it becomes when involved in a massive pileup in no man's land. The camera loses any sense of which direction you should be heading, and you're pretty much screwed when it happens. There's also stock car racing, which is your traditional racing mode with the simple goal of winning the race, all completed on the same five tracks featured in Reckon Racing. Even though crashing takes a back seat here, it's unavoidable, and it's a very fun take on your standard racing game. While the game's collision physics are done quite well, the driving controls themselves aren't especially tight and are largely dependent on which vehicle you select, with the game offering three different options. Unfortunately, you have to set through this long loading screen to select a different one, a classic example of presentation trumping function. Can I please just select a different car from the menu? Each car is basically a reskinned version of the other, but with differing speeds and drifting controls on turns. The rookie car is a bit slower, but it's very difficult to lose control or spin out, with a much more forgiving and on rails type of feel. This makes it well suited for the crash modes. Amateur gives you more control, for better or worse, with Pro upping this to the max, and you'll probably find yourself graduating to these cars with more experience. Destruction Derby also supports the link cable, but this sadly comes at the expense of no split screen multiplayer. I was always a fan of the link cable, but it's certainly not a convenient way to provide head-to-head -head multiplayer functionality. The game also offers a time trial mode, which is what you would expect. It's nice that it's included, but I would turn to many other titles for this feature. Finally, we have Destruction Derby. Here you start in an open arena named The Bowl and are awarded points similar to Reckon Racing, but it requires different strategies and constant monitoring of your vehicle's damage. Lose a wheel and you'll essentially be driving in circles. Lose your rear axle and you'll lose power. Blow your radiator and you're out of the race, with the white smoke being the best indicator that you need to start avoiding any frontal contact. While this starts out as a blast, it usually devolves into a backwards crawl which has you wishing you blew your radiator when you had the chance. And the biggest sin here is that there is only one track available. I honestly don't know how they made a game called Destruction Derby and didn't come up with at least a few different bowls. There's also a total destruction mode where you survive as long as you can while every vehicle targets you. But this is more of a curiosity than a full-fledged experience. Overall, I think Destruction Derby manages to provide a unique and welcome alternative to your traditional racing game. They get the crash physics mostly right, and the game's balance between racing and demolition is done well. It's just a fun time jumping in and smashing cars but it does suffer from a lack of visual flair or over-the-top action, with bland tracks and a sorely lacking amount of arenas that keep the game from reaching its full potential. Destruction Derby was both a commercial and critical success, eventually spawning multiple sequels and was released to mostly positive reviews. Next Generation gave the game 4 out of 5 stars. Game Fan gave the game scores ranging from 85 to 90 and GamePro gave the game a 4.5, stating, Anyone looking to play bumper cars with high-revving racing machines will have a blast. Besides the original Longbox release, the game was also released in a jewel case variant as well as a Greatest Hits, with current prices around $10. The game was also ported to the PC with an MS-DOS release. A US Saturn version was planned, but was eventually cancelled, and was only released in Japanese and PAL regions, where it is known as Destruction Dobby. So that's a look back at Destruction Derby. Although I'm more familiar with its sequel, it was fun to explore where it all started and is definitely worth the slow asking price. Thanks for watching everyone, and I'll see you next time.